If you've watched much of my channel, then there's a good chance that you've seen at least a couple of really small Raspberry Pi based gaming handhelds. From the Minty Pi to the VMU and the Tiny Pi and Tiny Pi Pro, making these things as small as possible has sort of become a staple within the community. So today I've got a new one to show you called the Cart Boy. So this is the Cart Boy from Novel and Postman. They're a two-man team that make up Gamebox systems. And before I get into everything, a couple of things to get out of the way. This video will be kind of out of the ordinary for me. Usually I like doing videos where I'm either showing you how to make something from scratch or put together a kit, that kind of thing. At this point, they're only planning on offering pre-made units, so this would be more of a review or community spotlight kind of thing. And like it says in the title, we are giving away one of these, so if you want to enter to win, check out the link in the description. Also, this happened not too long ago. So first of all, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Never thought in a million years that I would be getting one of these. And obviously it's all thanks to you guys. So again, thank you. Here before too long, I'll be doing a workshop tour video like a lot of you have asked for, show you what kind of tools I use and 3D printers, the laser that I've been using, those kinds of things. And I'll have a bunch of giveaways as well. So stay tuned for that. Uh, it should be out here in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so the cart boy. It's called that because originally the idea was to see if they could cram a whole gaming handheld inside of an original Game Boy cartridge. They actually did manage to do that, amazingly enough, but they had to make some sacrifices along the way, the biggest being the battery life. It could only manage about 15 minutes of gameplay before it died. Yeah, not ideal. So they decided to shift to a totally custom 3D printed shell while still maintaining roughly the same footprint as a Game Boy cartridge. In fact, if you stack two Game Boy carts on top of each other, that's right at the same size as the Cart Boy. That extra thickness let them fit a much bigger battery in there, uh, and it also made it a lot more comfortable to hold and play too. Now, as for features and specs, it's got a 1.3 inch 240 by 240 LCD. It's actually the same screen used in the Tiny Pi Pro. Super sharp, you can actually read tiny text on it, assuming you've got decent eyes. Uh, there's a power indicator here on the front that'll change colors depending on the level of the battery and a pretty decent sounding speaker as well. It's got a full Super NES style button layout with L and R buttons up here at the top. This is the power button here in the middle and the charging port up here on top as well. We've got access to the SD card at the bottom and a headphone jack. And then on the side, we've got a USB port that you can use to either transfer ROMs, plug in a controller or a keyboard, that kind of thing, as well as access to the HDMI port, which actually is usable. Double tapping on the power button reboots it into 1080p mode so that you can plug in a controller and play on a big screen. Double tap it again and it'll reboot back into portable mode. Postman says that he's working on a software update that'll make it so that it can switch resolutions like that without having to reboot. So that'll be nice and he's done just an awesome job on the software from what I've seen. It's a Raspberry Pi Zero that's running everything on the inside. So if you're into these kinds of projects and you probably already know about what to expect as far as performance, but basically you can run anything up through Super NES and Sega Genesis, uh, some Game Boy Advance, and even some PlayStation games uh, if you fiddle with RetroPie a little bit. You just obviously won't have L2 and R2 buttons. The battery is 1200 milliamp hours, which is pretty big considering the size of this thing. It takes up basically the entire back half of the shell. I ran my standard Super Metroid battery rundown test a few times and it lasted a little over four hours each time. That's pretty great, again, especially for the size of this thing. So that's what's on the inside, but how does it actually feel to play games on it? Actually, surprisingly good. I always get comments on projects like this saying that something so small can't possibly be comfortable to sit and play on for very long. And honestly, if I were gonna play for hours on end, then yeah, I'd probably reach for something a little bit bigger like a Game Boy Zero. But for something so small and pocketable that you can pull out and play for a few minutes here and there throughout the day while you're waiting on something, it's not bad at all. And overall, I actually really like the form factor. It kind of reminds me of those old Tiger LCD handhelds from the 90s, but you're playing the actual game instead of a cheap LCD ripoff. I mean, come on. Now, there are a couple of things that I'm not a huge fan of. For one, the official theme that comes on it, I'm just not a fan of it, especially when you have it plugged into a TV. 
but that's easy enough to change, so not a huge deal. The other thing is the L and R buttons and the power button. They work well enough, I just think that they could either make them stick out a little bit less or even make them flush with the shell and it would look a lot cleaner that way. Those are minor gripes though, not deal breakers by any means. And overall, I've been pretty impressed with what Novel and Postman have come up with. They went through a ton of iterations of both the shell design and the main PCB, so kudos to them for all the hard work that they put in on this. And that's the Cart Boy. If you wanna learn more or order one for yourself, check out the link in the description. You'll also be able to enter to win one there. Definitely make sure that you're following both Novel and Postman on Instagram. Uh, they're both constantly posting cool stuff that they're working on. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I know that I keep having these big gaps between videos lately. Uh, I've just had a lot going on in real life, but I should be getting back into the swing of things here soon and start getting videos out more frequently. That's all I've got for this one though, so I'll see you guys next time.